Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Spare Parts, and today I'm unboxing and reviewing set number 75345, the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack. So this is a set that came out in the year 2023, comes with 119 pieces, 4 minifigures, and retails for $19.99. But I got it for $15.99 at a steal out of a Black Friday deal at Target. So definitely got a good deal there, but today we're going to discover, is this actually worth $19.99? There's some controversy around this set, so stay tuned to find out more. Taking a look at the box art, you can kind of see what they think the turret will look like, or what I hope it looks like. It looks kind of nice with the minifigure sitting in it, and I really hope it's minifig scale. And then on the back here, it looks like we have a city. Not really sure where that is. And you can also see false advertising on the front, and that is right here. If you look really closely, you can see right above it, there's the helmet hole. Because on clone troopers, there's these things called helmet holes. And that's like, you can kind of see it on here. I'll show it better when I have the minifigure, but... It's like where you put the accessories in, in and they actually crop this to lower his visor thing so that it looks like it looks less goofy on him. I'll have to show you when I get the minifigure, but they did something bad here. On the back, we have another angle of the set with the minifigures in front and then the turret in back. And then there's some play features here. It looks like the turret does something. I don't know why there's arrows there. Guess that means something. Time to unbox. This is going to be painful as well because of the thumb tab, but here it goes. Yeah, I just totally ripped off the side. I hate that so much. Alright, so this is basically the exact same thing as the battle pack I unboxed a couple days ago. It has the same exact layout, same tiny instruction manual, same two bags, and then the bag for the accessories. I think that's really nice. I really like how they're like cutting back on paper waste with the tinier instruction manuals, even though... Some people don't really like the white background. So I'll be back when it's built. So here it is all finished and built. And I think it looks pretty good at a first glance. The turret is kind of like a mashup of colors. I'm not really sure what it's from, but I think it's supposed to be like a micro version of this bigger turret. I'll show a picture of it on the screen. I don't know what the set is called, but I've seen it before. And I think it looks pretty good for a micro build, but let's take a closer look. So taking a look at the play features of this set, starting off we'll do the minifigure play features, and that is you can put a minifigure on this piece right here. It's like that black piece that kind of holds their legs in. So you just slide them in, and then he's kind of operating the turret, and that's pretty accurate to what we see with this thing in like the show and the movies. There's like a minifigure alongside it, and it kind of operates it. It's really nice that they could like include that on such a small scale. And then another play feature of the set is it can fire, and this actually is really cool. It like seems to fire a lot faster than the older like spring-loaded shooters I had. Maybe it's because the springs wore out, but I really like the spring-loaded shooter. It's like really well integrated and it fires really fast. I don't know if that's just like I haven't bought a set with a spring-loaded shooter in a while, but that's that's super cool. I really like that. And you can also move the cannon if you want to fire it like straight. You can do that and you can tilt it up. And then you can also move the legs a little bit. And that is like you just move this joint and this joint. And it's kind of difficult to get it, like them all to be straight because it always seems like it's off just the way the legs are. And in the middle, there's like an extra thing for support for the legs. But like it's, I don't know which way you're supposed to have it because on the box, it kind of shows it like flat with the ground. When you do that, like before, it just looked really weird. So I'm kind of trying this way. I don't know. You can, you can do what you want with the legs, but I kind of like it like this. So taking a look at the minifigure here, this is the clone 501st officer. I think he looks really good. We haven't had a 501st Trooper in a while, or actually we just had a 501st Battle Pack, but it's been a while since we've like had a lot of them. And I feel like this, he looks pretty good. I have like an older version. I feel like this is much more detailed. He has like these stripes on the legs, which is something not all the troopers have. It's just him because he's like an officer. The other ones just have normal legs. And his torso, I think just has like a blue belt. That's the only difference. And I think it looks pretty good. And then underneath the helmet, which does have like a range finder here. There's actually like a controversy with that range finder here and I'll go over that right now. All right, so moving on to the helmet controversy and this is the, where Lego basically photoshopped their box art to make the helmet holes look less ridiculous or just the range finder basically. And if you look really closely at the box, you can see that the range finder goes in this side and above that you can kind of see like there's a hole. So they cropped the range finder or moved it down to like go into the side of his helmet, not where the hole is to make it look less ridiculous. Like if I'll bring up the normal minifigure right next to him, you can kind of see how the normal minifigure has it higher up and Lego just wanted to make it look like less ridiculous and they moved it down. And you can see it's a lot higher on the minifigure. So 
kind of like a controversy there, kind of false advertising. And I think this is like not the only time they've done this. I feel like they've done this before with other like clone accessories on the helmet. But anyway, back to what I was saying, underneath his helmet, he has this nice newer clone face, which is not exclusive. I think that's what they use for all clone battle packs now. So recently I reviewed like the 332nd battle pack and they had the same exact head print. So I think it's just a new thing and I really like it. It looks a lot better than the old angry face. Moving on to the 501st Heavy Troopers. I think these guys look really cool. I think they have a different helmet print. Yeah, they have like these black lines right there. I think that looks pretty good. It's, yeah, I'll bring up the other guy's helmet. It's a little bit different. The other guy doesn't have that at all. He just has like the straight blue lines. And I think that fits well with these guys. They also have like the view things above their eyes so you can kind of tilt. And they have an exclusive torso printing as well with like the strap. And then on their backs, they have this like Imperial insignia thing, or this might be the Republic insignia at this point. And I think they have a nice back printing under that, which I will show now. So this is the back printing of the heavy trooper. And this is the back printing of like the 501st officer guy. And you can see they're kind of different. One of them has like the strap and the other one just has like the blue back printing. So there are a lot of unique torso printings in this set. I'm kind of surprised. Moving on to the final minifigure in the set, and that is the 501st clone specialist. I think he looks really good and he's probably my favorite in the set just because I really like that like view piece at the top. It's like, I don't think it's exclusive, but it looks really good over his eyes like that. And he also has unique torso printing with like these yellow lines. I think on the back, it's like the same thing, but I don't really know what the yellow lines symbolize. That's probably his rank, but he has the normal leg printing. And then he has this nice blaster with like the candle piece on the end, but in black. And I think that's like a sniper rifle and that looks super cool. And then underneath he has the normal head printing. But I just, I just really like the look of him. And he also, oh yeah, he also has blue arms, which is like really weird that only one of these troopers has blue arms because I think they look so much better with the blue arms. So I really like this minifigure. Taking a quick look at the design of the set, you can kind of see there's some like yellow and some red, which like kind of look a little weird. I think that's accurate, but it just kind of looks different. I mean, I like kind of the colors, like I added some, but it just, I don't know, it looks kind of strange to me. And then you can also see that like, on the bottom here, there's this like clear piece to help give it support. And there's some like silver on the sides. So kind of like a mashup design. Like, I don't know really where you'd use this. Like, it's kind of weird. There's just tan there, but I mean, it, it's a good canon, like a good representation of the scaled down thing, but I don't feel like the colors mesh as well as they could. Moving on the value for money. So this set usually retails for $19.99 with 119 pieces. So a little bit better price per piece than we've seen with the 332nd Clone Trooper Battle Pack. That one only had like 108 pieces. So I feel like this is a better price per piece and the minifigures are actually like a lot more exclusive. Like they have different prints a lot more than the other set. So I feel like this is definitely a better value. The build is not my favorite though. Like I kind of don't like the weird color mashup. But I do feel like there's better value here with the minifigures, which is essentially what you're buying the set for. So I'd say like, even though it's still like nearing 20 cents per piece, this is a much better value. And I was going to buy this actually for $20, but when I got it, I got for $15.99. I was like, that's a steal. So a little bit better value here. Moving on to prints and stickers. So there are only two prints in the set and they are both just this backpack piece, one by one tile on the minifigures. It's kind of a minifigure print, but it is still like a tile. So I'm kind of counting it as a print. And also, there is no weak parts on the set, really. I mean, the feet can, like, kind of be weak, but they don't fall apart. So I'd just say there are no weak parts, and there are two prints, but they're basically minifigure prints, so they don't really impact the set very much. So overall, I feel like the set is an 8 out of 10. Just because I really like the minifigures, I just feel like the build could use some improvements. I feel like the minifigures are very accurate, and they're very detailed and exclusive, and they have a lot of variation. Like, that's a nice thing about this battle pack, because the minifigures are really varied. But I do feel like the controversy with like the false advertising kind of brings the set down, although it does have good value. So it's kind of like pretty good. It's just the build and the controversy kind of bring it down to an 8 out of 10 set for me. So there you have it, guys. That's my review of set number 75345, the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.